Hello and welcome to our Winter Alumni College series from the Chicken to the Egg Backyard Chicken Keeping 101. We're so excited that you all were able to join us today. My name is Katherine Abrecht. I am the Assistant Director of Advancement Communications here at the College of Worcester. And I am here tonight with May Evans, our Development Coordinator. If you need any assistance with Zoom, please feel free to send us a message in the chat and we will help you as soon as we can. Um, you can also use the chat to communicate with each other, share where you are joining us from and post questions throughout the course. To fully participate in tonight's course and to make this virtual environment closely resemble a Worcester classroom, we ask you to please turn on your video. In an effort to make this course as accessible as possible, we have a live transcript available by clicking the link in the top left corner of your screen or by following the link in the chat. Without further ado, I want to thank Shana Sharp, class of 99, for volunteering to lead this course and for sharing her knowledge with us today. All right, take it away, Shana. Hi, everybody. So I'm Shana Worcester, class of 1999. I was an English major. Um, and this is Peepers. This is one of five cats. Apparently he would like to join us tonight. Um, I'm hoping he's gonna lay down eventually. Um, but welcome to Chicken and the Egg, uh, Backyard Chicken Keeping. Um, I am a crazy chicken lady, as you will see. Uh, I'm gonna share a PowerPoint here in just, just a second. There we go. Look at that. We have technology. It is like, we're just rocking and rolling. Um, so there we go. <clears throat> Everybody can see that I can, I assume. Okay, so if you have any questions, please use the chat. I can't really see the chat while I'm in present mode. Um, so I'm sure one of my coworkers here will help uh, and just let me know if there's any questions. Uh, jump right in, no question. And we're even gonna go through a few, um, a few of the most common questions that I get. Um, and I can guarantee you that if you're thinking something might be a silly question or a stupid question, it is not. Um, and that's why we're here today, so we can learn. Um, <laughs> we need to put him on the floor, so we can learn um, about chickens. I do want to share a little show and tell before we get started, because um, we had a very exciting day here. Uh, last year, I uh, raised a certain breed of chicken called Americanas. <laughs> He's back, <laughs> called Americanas, and they lay blue, they lay <laughs> blue eggs. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this. But this is a blue egg. Finally, 10 months old and they laid a blue egg. So that was my very exciting chicken news um, from around the ranch. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, about how long it takes and what to expect and, and all that good stuff. So we're going to talk today about why, why do you even want chickens. Um, we're going to go through some anatomy and terminology basics, common questions, uh, picking a breed, biosecurity, food, water, and shelter, and throughout the season. So where do you put them and what do you feed them? Um, and health, some health basics. Let's see here. So why do people keep chickens? Um, some wanna raise, raise them for eggs. Some wanna raise them for meat. Uh, some wanna sell them and breed them. Um, some wanna show them. So if you've ever been to the, the county fair, you'll see a lot of people that show chickens. And believe it or not, there's actually poultry shows where that's all they do. Uh, there's a huge poultry show in Columbus um, and you can see all kinds of crazy chicken breeds. Some breed them, have them just for pets. Um, some do them for a project um, for 4-H. Uh, and I sort of was a hybrid of those. Um, I just wanted chickens, but I sold the idea to my husband because they lay eggs. And the irony is, I don't even really like eggs all that much um, to eat. So <laughs> um, I do have right now uh, 22 chickens. Uh, by the end of May, I will have 26 because I just ordered some green egg laying chickens. So I'm pretty excited about that. So there's lots of different reasons. Um, it's a really good idea to know, or at least have an idea of why you want to keep the chickens uh, because that's gonna determine how you house them, what kind of chickens you get, um, how you take care of them, what you feed them. Um, so just have a basic idea um, because that's going to determine a lot of factors. Couple terminology basics to know. A chick is a baby chicken. A pullet is an immature female, so she hasn't laid an egg yet. Um, she's not sexually mature, an egg laying. Hen is a mature female. A cockerel is a, an immature male, and a rooster or a cock is a mature male. 
And I always go through the terminology basics because inevitably you will find yourself on an online forum or somewhere where there's commenting back and forth. And a lot of people get the terminology wrong. Uh, and it's a really good idea to just to make sure you have it right so you know what questions you're asking. Um, I did include a link, uh, a really good link that has a great glossary of all the wonderful poultry terms that you might need. Uh, but this is, this is the basics. Uh, and you can always go with uh, the most inclusive term, which is chicken, because they're all chickens. We are not going to have a quiz on anatomy. You just should, again, should have a basic idea of what goes where. Um, and the reason that you want to know all of this um, is because if you have a problem, if somebody gets sick, if somebody gets injured, if there's some sort of an, itch, an issue, you're going to need to know these terms and you're going to need to know what's what. Um, none of it is particularly difficult. Uh, you can get a lot more uh, detailed if you would like. Um, but these are kind of the basics that you need to know if you're gonna if you're gonna have chickens in your backyard. So you'll have a copy of this. Like I said, I'm not gonna quiz you, but this is always good to know. So here's some common questions: Do chickens lay eggs without a rooster? This is maybe the most common question um, I get. I don't have a rooster because I'm not allowed to have one here uh, because of my zoning laws. So just like us, us ladies, um, chicken or chickens are born with all the eggs they're gonna lay in their lifetime, just like us. And just like women, they lay in it. Like we lay an egg every month, chickens lay one every 24 to 26 hours. Um, that does depend on breed. Some chickens lay more, some chickens lay less. Um, but it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a conveyor belt. It's a process that's always, that's always going. Um, I have a great video. Um, I'll send you the link after because it's about 10 minutes long. That's a great video about the reproduction, uh, the reproductive tract of a chicken. If you're into that sort of thing, um, I am. But yeah, you don't need a rooster. They will lay eggs with or without the rooster. Um, everybody asks me that question. And it's, you know, now I'm thinking about it like, well, it seems like, is that a silly question? No, because a lot of people don't know. And now you know. So do chickens poop their eggs? This is um, a little bit of a tricky question. Technically, they come out of the same place. The same hole in the back is where the, where the eggs come out of. Um, but when the egg comes out, it pinches off that intestine. So they are not pooping and laying eggs at the exact same time. However, your eggs will have poop on them from time to time because chickens are gross um, and they're dirty and they don't use toilet paper. So they could be sitting there in the nesting box and lay an egg and they could still be sitting there and then they could poop. So you will have poop on the eggs. And that's one theme you're probably gonna see here tonight is you have to get intimately familiar with poop. Um, if poop's not your thing uh, and it really makes you squeamish and grossed out, chickens are not for you because they just, they poop everywhere all the time. So do you need to put fresh eggs in the refrigerator? You could ask this question um, to 10 different people that keep chickens and you can get 10 different answers. Um, so the scientific answer is you should put them in the refrigerator because that minimizes the risk of bacteria. Um, however, uh, when chickens lay an egg, they don't know if it's fertilized or not. Uh, they don't know which one, even if you have a rooster, they don't know which ones are fertilized, they don't know which ones aren't. So they, every egg they lay has something around it called a bloom. Uh, a bloom is a protective coating and it keeps the bacteria from entering the egg so the baby chickens don't get, don't get an infection. So if you don't wash the egg and it isn't damaged, you can leave them on the counter. I do leave mine on the counter. Um, if I get an egg that is extremely poopy, like a really gross poopy egg, um, I will wash them and put them in the fridge. Um, if you wash them, you're washing that bloom off. So put them in the fridge. And if you're just not sure and you're like, I don't really know, just put them in the fridge. It's not gonna hurt them. It's not gonna make them taste any different. It's not gonna do anything bad. Um, but you do always wanna wash those eggs, uh, fresh eggs, and you always wanna wash your hands after handling them. Uh, Cause the eggs you get in the store, they're bleached and they're cleaned and they're washed. Um, and if you wash them, they do have to be refrigerated. Pro tip though, always crack those fresh eggs into a separate bowl before using. And this actually goes for store-bought eggs and backyard chicken eggs. Because if you've ever cracked a bad egg into a pound cake that requires six eggs and you're five eggs in, I guarantee you, you'll never do that again. Um, but it is a good practice because you never know because um, chickens are chickens 
and there could be a microscopic crack in there that you don't see uh, that gets the bacteria gets in there and when you crack that open that sucker stinks so crack it into a separate bowl um, before tossing it into whatever you're using how long do they live um, they can live five to eight years if they are kept safe from predators they're clean food and water uh, they can live a long time um, the thing is the chickens everything eats them so if you let them free range meaning they're not locked up um, and sometimes even if they are locked up uh, something's going to try to eat them um, i've had a fox and a hawk go after my chickens um, and uh, you just and we'll, we'll go over that safety measures to keep your birds safe but in generally they can live five to eight years they won't lay eggs for five to eight years um, for the most part generally they will start laying when they're four to five months old or you could be like my lazy freeloaders and start laying when you're 10 months old. But generally they lay pretty steadily until they're about three um, and then they lay less and less and eventually they will stop. So that's another thing to consider. Uh, if you have a chicken that is going to live to five to eight years and stops laying eggs after three, are you going to want to keep that chicken? Um, and if no, what is your plan? So it's, again, it's just something to think about. Everybody has to come up with their answer on their own. Um, I am fortunate that I don't have to sell my eggs to pay the mortgage, so mine can just retire uh, and live happily, not laying eggs uh, as long as they live. I did have a I did have a talk with my newest chickens, though, you know, ten months old, not laying yet. We did have a discussion about what that meant to lay eggs um, and what that was all about. But looks like they got the message and they started. So I'm up to three blue eggs so far. So do chickens eat meat? Uh, this is a big one I get. Yes, they do. They will eat everything. Um, I don't feed I don't feed my chickens meat. If I fed it to them, they would eat it. Uh, cannibalistic and gross, yes, but they're omnivores and they will eat. They, they'll eat anything. Um, and this is something to keep in mind. They will eat styrofoam. They will eat shiny things like screws if they're in their run. They will peck at your red toenails if you're wearing flip-flops. However, everybody in this class should know that you would never wear flip-flops in your chicken pen. We'll talk about that in biosecurity. Um, but they will peck mice, frogs. Um, they've I, My chickens have gone after a squirrel. Uh, the squirrel got away, but they will go after stuff. Um, so just be very careful about what's in their area because if you have, I mean, if there's a screw that fell off something or a washer, they will eat it. Like they are, they're smart, but they're also food, they're also food motivated. Um, a lot of people try to insulate their coop with styrofoam and guess what? They'll eat that too. So just be careful what's in there. Why do you feed cooked eggs to chickens? Isn't that cannibalism? Um, again, another question I get a lot. So I do feed my chickens cooked eggs for a couple reasons. Um, when my chickens are babies and they're newly hatched, I give them some boiled egg yolk because um, that's the best nutrition. Because what do you think they eat when they're developing? That yolk is the nutrition for the baby chicken as the chicken is developing. Um, chickens do eat their own eggs if they're deficient in calcium. Um, and sometimes they can be buttheads and just eat the eggs because it's fun and it tastes good. Um, so I cook them so they don't so they don't equate this with a treat. Um, and also in the winter, sometimes I just have too many eggs, so I mush up the shells and make them their own little scrambled treat, and they love it. Um, and again, is it cannibalism? I guess um, I don't have a rooster, so in my case, it's not. But you will find that a lot of people do this. How long does it take for an egg to hatch? About 21 days, give or take a day or two. Are they smart? Um, yes, they can rec recognize about 100 different human faces. Uh, my chickens know me. They know me when it's me as opposed to somebody else. So if I go in the backyard, they start making a big ruckus because the food lady is there. Um, and what's funny is they're really good watch chickens, I guess, because if it's summer and I have the windows and stuff open, a lot of times our neighbors will just stop by to see the chickens or you know, bring their kids by to see the chickens. And I know somebody's in the backyard because they start making a stink about, you know, I can hear them. So then I look in the backyard and I know there's something going on. It's either another person or a predator or something, um, but I know when something's up. But they are relatively smart. Um, they, know, they know their routine. Um, 
some of them are smarter than others. I have a couple that are pretty dumb um, and that <laughs> if they didn't live in an enclosed pen, they probably would have been eaten a long time ago, um, but they know where the food is. Um, today, I had to move the mealworms, which is a favorite treat. I had to move the mealworms um, inside a bucket because they figured out where I put them. So <laughs> as soon as I opened the, the, thing, the door, that's just the first place they go. Um, so yeah, they're, they, they're relatively smart. So I covered the basic questions I get. Did I not, are there questions that I didn't cover? Do you want, is there anything you want me to clarify? Um, if so, let's see, let's pull up this chat here. Okay, so I see a couple questions in the chat that I'm going to um, go over before we move on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, ah. Um, I only wash them with water. Um, you can use soap if you want to. Just make sure you wash, you know, you wash them really, really well. Um, and, you know, even if you're just, well, I'm just going to make scrambled eggs, so I'm not going to, I don't need to wash them. Well, yeah, you do, because little pieces of you'll, or little pieces of shell can get in there, little poop flakes, and nobody wants that. Um, so, yeah, I just use water, but you can use soap if it makes you feel better. Just make sure you rinse them really, really well, um, because eggs are porous. So make sure you rinse them really well and um, you put them in the fridge when you're done. Good question. Other questions for now? All right, cool. So what breed should you get? Because there's a gazillion chicken breeds. Um, these two, they're pictures that I have pictured. These are two of mine. Um, those are called silkies. Uh, though it's hard to tell in the photo, but they only weigh about a pound. Those, this breed is very small. They lay little tiny eggs. They are very sweet. They are the little brown one. Her name is Little Nugget, and she is maybe the dumbest chicken on the planet. Um, they just, she's just dumb. I don't, <laughs> I can't explain it. Um, but she's sitting with her buddy. Um, that's not her daughter. They, she didn't hatch her. So when you're thinking about breeds, um, I wanted silkies because they're cute and they are very sweet. Um, so why do you want them? Again, if you want meat chickens, there's certain breeds that are better than others. Silkies would make terrible meat chickens because they're so small. You would get chicken wings that are about that big. Um, but if you want chicken wings that are that big, go, go ahead. Um, temperament is a big thing. If you have kids, um, most, you know, most hens are pretty sweet, at least to humans, but some are a little more flighty, a little more spastic, a little more crazy um, than others. So broodiness, what that means, it means they want to sit on their eggs. And when chickens go broody, um, they don't lay eggs because they are sitting, they think they're sitting on eggs that are going to hatch, even if they're not. Um, broodiness is a hormonal thing. Some breeds are very broody. Silkies are very, very broody. I've got eight, eight or nine. There's, there's one or two that are always broody. So uh, there's always silkies that aren't laying eggs. Um, so if you want something, if you want a chicken that look, I just want the eggs. I don't care anything else about the chicken. Um, you're gonna want a different breed. You want to look at cold and cold and heat tolerance, depending on where you live. Um, most chickens are pretty cold tolerant. Um, you wouldn't know it. It's going to be about 10 degrees tonight, and they're fine. I don't have a heat lamp or anything. We'll talk more about that in the seasons. And their general hardiness. Um, silkies are not hardy. Um, I do not recommend silkies for first-time chicken owners because they just they're just fragile, and they just die for no reason. Um, or there's certain things that go wrong with them that, you know, if it's your first time having chickens, it's not the best breed. Um, something like a Rhode Island Red, which I'll show you a picture of. Rhode Island Reds, those are super hardy. Man, I've got a couple Rhode Island Reds and those things are tanks. Um, you know, there's also experience level. Um, there's certain breeds, um, they can get an attitude or they're broody or they have issues or, you know, so it depends. Um, on your experience level as well. As I've kept chickens over the years, I've added different breeds, um, some experimental breeds, some that worked out better than others. Um, so take all this stuff into consideration. Oops. Come on. Oh boy, come on, there we go. So this is a Rhode Island Red. Um, and here's the kind of things that you want, and this is Petunia, this is one of my chickens. Um, not many of my chickens have names because I don't know who's who, but I do know who Petunia is. 
Um, and Petunia is very sweet and she just follows me around the yard. She's a big girl. So you really want to look at, um, you know, do you want brown eggs? Do you want white eggs? Do you want blue eggs, green eggs? Um, do you want big eggs? Um, these are production birds. So these will lay an egg pretty much every day. Um, they also can be a dual breed. So you can, these can also be meat birds, although uh, Petunia is not going to be a meat bird, um, but she could be. Uh, they mature moderately early. Uh, my Rhode Island Reds started laying, I want to say like four and a half months, whereas some breeds take a lot longer. Um, are they big? How much space do you have? Um, they never, I've never had one of these go broody. They pretty much lay their egg and walk away. They're like, here you go. You deal with it. Um, so there's a lot of places that you can get this, and I'll show you that slide here in a second. Um, so this is a silky. Um, <laughs> so petunia weighs about um, I don't know, seven seven pounds. Um, these silkies lay about one about one pound. So they're not good producers. So they have little tiny eggs. They're not good producers. Um, they have like cream colored eggs, and they mature slowly. Uh, they don't do well in heat, but they are so sweet and they go very broody. So again, if you're like, look, I just need eggs, not the breed for you. So lots of stuff to take into consideration. Um, let's see here. I have a question that came up in chat. Okay, so what is comb type? That is an excellent question. I'm gonna go back one. So see this right here? This is her comb. That little ridge on the top of the head. If you look at her, they have a very small comb. So there's lots of different kinds of combs. There's, this is called a walnut comb, because if you look at it, it looks kind of like a, a walnut. Um, there's rose comb and pea comb, and it really is just how they look. Um, there's a bunch of different types. One thing to consider when you are in a cold climate, these combs, and this is the wattle right here, these combs can get frostbite. Now the frostbite's not gonna kill them. Um, what'll happen is the uh, spots of their comb will turn black and fall off, and they'll just have a smaller comb. So if you're in a very, very cold climate, you might not want to get a breed that has a humongous comb. Um, or if you're going to show them and you're in Ohio and it gets, you know, sub-zero or you're in Maine where it's winter 10 months out of the year, you want to make sure that if you're going to be showing birds, you have a plan so their combs don't get frostbite because that's going to have a problem when you, and I have a guide somewhere that I'll share with everybody that shows the different type of comb. Yeah, let's see, how old is too old for a meat bird? Another good question. So meat birds really should be processed um, starting around eight weeks of age. Uh, it depends on the breed, some get bigger than others. Um, and meat birds, they can't, you know, they, if it's a bird that's like, I could, if I really wanted to make petunia into chicken fingers, I could, um, she's about three um, and she, it would be fine. Uh, but if it's a meat bird, um, something like a, a Cornish cross, that's a popular meat bird. Um, they mature very quickly. They grow very quickly. Um, and it's actually considered, if it's a bird that's bred only for meat, it's actually can, it's actually kind of cruel, in my opinion, to try and grow them out to full maturity because they don't grow enough feathers and their bodies get too heavy for their legs. Um, they can have heart attacks. So, you know, meat birds, I would start eight to 10 weeks when you process them. Uh, let's see, what's the difference between different colors of eggs? Absolutely nothing, just the color. Um, they don't taste any different. They don't smell any different. They just have prettier she pretty shells. Um, and I've got, you know, they lay brown eggs, so a lot of my chickens, but they're almost pink. So it's just a, a beautiful rainbow of colors. Um, oh, I got another good question. Can you add new chicks to an existing group of chickens? You absolutely can. Uh, and I'm actually going to cover that when we talk about brooding chicks. So yes, you can. And I will talk about how to do that. Oops, there we go. So I will have these resources for you. Um, these are just a couple hatcheries that I, I've used Meyer. They're here in Ohio. I've used Cackle. Um, I've heard good things about McMurray. If you go on any of their websites, you can browse through chicken breeds and you can get all the information about the different breeds. Um, they also have free catalogs that they will send you. So I highly recommend uh, signing up for their catalog because the day the chicken catalog comes is a good day. And even though I know like a lot about the breeds, I love to just look through, look, look through it. Um, I recommend the most, I think the Meyer 
catalog, their catalog is great. They have a really big um, two page insert that'll compare a whole bunch of the most popular breeds together. So now that you're, you're gonna go down that rabbit hole, I apologize in advance because if you're really interested in chickens, you're gonna spend a lot of time looking through these sites. <laughs> and then um, an Ohio State Extension uh, has a pretty good fact sheet um, on chicken breeds. All right, so uh, other questions about chicken breeds, go ahead and toss them in the chat. Um, I will keep an eye on that. Um, but really the chicken breed comes down to why do you want them um, and what's your skill level? And you can order whatever you want, um, but just know that it's a pet or whatever that could live five to eight years, so be prepared. I cannot harp on biosecurity enough. This is one of the absolute most important parts of being a good chicken steward. Um, footwear, hand washing, tools and equipment, feed water, cleaning, and what's funny is, you know, the pandemic and everybody's hand washing and PPE and everybody that raises chickens is like, <laughs> I got that covered. That's my life. Um, this is not only a best practice for your flock, um, but it's for your family, for your visitors, for other flocks. Um, so footwear. Have a pair of shoes or preferably boots. Have a pair of sturdy boots. Um, waterproof would probably be best. That only goes from your garage, not in your house, but from the garage um, to the chicken coops and back to the house. And that's the only place it goes. Um, you do not want to wear any footwear in your house that you have worn into the chicken coop because there's poop in there and there's all kinds of grody yuckies in there. You don't want to bring that in your house. Um, I have a pair of boots, which I have a picture I'll show you, that they live in the garage um, and I change into them. I stomp around my yard into my chicken coop, and then they stay in the garage. They don't ever come in the house. Those boots also never go to another chicken coop. Um, they don't go to the fair. They don't go to the poultry show. They don't go to a farm. Um, they go nowhere but my, because you can, you can take stuff from your yard and your chickens and unknowingly infect another flock. And the same goes reverse. So let's say you have chickens and you have a friend that has chickens and you're gonna go see their coop uh, and they're set up, so you want to take some boots, don't take your chicken boots with you because you don't know their biosecurity practices. You don't know what other things their chickens might be exposed to. So you want to keep your flock a closed loop as much as possible. Um, hand washing, especially for kids. Um, it's funny, my <laughs> our neighbors are good friends and they have two young daughters that love the chickens. And you say, Maya, don't touch your face. And what's the first thing she does? She touches her face. So if you're gonna have people over, it's a good idea to have hand, uh, at least have hand sanitizer out there in the coop. Um, you know, hand washing is, is really key. It is so important, especially scrub under your nails if you have them, because um, you will get poop under your nails too. Um, any tools and equipment that you use with your chickens should only stay with your chickens. Um, you shouldn't cross contaminate any sort of tools or equipment. So if you have a, a shovel that you use to shovel out the chicken coop, you wanna make sure that that shovel stays with you um, and your flock. Um, same thing with food and water. You don't uh, share water or food. If somebody has half a bag of chicken feed they didn't use, don't, don't take it. You don't want it, you don't need it. Just keep, your, keep it a closed system. Cleaning, um, it is a good idea for chickens. If you're gonna, when, not if, when you clean their coop, if you have one, wear an N95 mask. Um, those particulate masks because you are sweeping up poop particles and dander um, and dust. It gets so dusty and you don't want to breathe that stuff in. Um, so just make sure you're taking appropriate precautions. You don't need to wear a biohazard suit, but just make sure you're taking um, appropriate precautions when you're cleaning and when you're in the coop. Um, and, you know, if you go to, let's say you go to the fair, right? And the first thing I do at the fair is I wander through the chicken barn. Well, the tennis shoes that go to the fair, first of all, don't come back in my house. And second of all, they don't go out near my chicken coop. So just keep that in mind. It is a closed system. That's probably the best way to put it. I think we have a question in the chat. Let's see. Okay. So we have a question. I'd like chickens for eggs. I have a really small yard, so I don't know if I have room for them once they're done laying eggs. What are the options? Can they be used for meat? Where do you take them? Um, again, okay, so lots of questions. Um, so can they be used for meat? Again, it depends on the breed. So a Rhode Island Red 
uh, would probably be a good breed because they're known as a dual breed. So you can do it for both. Um, so you have several options. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna contradict myself and you'll see why in a little bit. Um, so you have a few options. If you went on a chicken page, a local like Facebook chicken group and said, I have these five hens, they've stopped laying, does anyone want them? Chances are somebody's gonna take them. Uh, so you can go that route. You can go to, um, a lot of times there's places like if you're in Cleveland, there's like Stearns Farm or places like that, that, um, that might take them. Um, I can't think of the name of it. There's an animal sanctuary. I think Happy Tails takes chickens. So you do have options to give them away, uh, rehome them. Um, yes, they can be used for meat. Uh, where do you take them? It depends on where, it depends on where you live. Um, I will say that if you're considering meat chickens, consider the work involved in processing a chicken. It is a lot of work to process one chicken. Not only do you have to kill it, and there's humane ways to do that, but you have to pluck it. And you have, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So if you're gonna raise meat chickens, think about one chicken, you get a couple of chicken breasts and some wings, is it worth the work? Um, for a lot of people it is. For me personally, it is not because that's just too much work for me. There are places that you can take them, but it depends on where you live. Um, I would check with some of your local uh, butchers they might take them, they might not. Um, if you have Amish in the area, they might know where to go and they might process them for you as well. Um, but again, I would try and just give them away because um, you're gonna be doing a lot of work for very little return. But that's my own personal opinion. Um, take, take that with, take it as you will, but you have options. You could probably just give them away. I would, I'd bet money on it. Good questions, you guys. So I will stop harping on biosecurity, but just remember, closed system. This is so, 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 so important because it is, chickens are so susceptible to so many things. It's hard enough, you know, to make sure um, that you're doing all this stuff right. Don't, don't tromp to the fair in your boots and bring something home that's avoidable. So, so there's so much stuff that's not avoidable, this is. All right, I will, I'll, I'll let it go for now. Okay, so food, water, and shelter getting into the meat, the meat of it, huh? Okay, so there's lots of stuff here. Um, so this is a picture of the feeder that I use. Notice I have a bowl of food down here, which I would like to get rid of, but I can't because that chicken I told you about, that little brown one, little nugget, she's too little to eat. Come on. She's too little to eat out of this feeder. Um, so <laughs> she's got to eat out of a bowl of food. So baby chicks, they're specific food for baby chickens because baby chickens um, should not have a lot of protein in their feed and a lot of calcium in their feed. I'm sorry, it's calcium, not protein. They should not have a lot of calcium in their feed. Um, now, older chickens, laying hens, they do need calcium and they need calcium when they get older, but chicks, the baby chicks, um, if you give them too much calcium, it can hamper their development uh, and cause some organ failure. So there is chick feed. If you go to any food store, your local feed store, Tractor Supply, uh, Rural King if you have one. Um, what's the other one? Farm and Fleet. I mean, all of those, they have chick feed. Um, it, says, it says it on the bag. It's pretty easy to find. <laughs> so just give them chick feed. It has everything they need. Um, it's a complete feed. If you want to see people argue online, ask them, go on a chicken forum, at your own peril and ask them if you should use medicated or non-medicated feed. And then it's the hunger games because they will absolutely just, you wanna see people fight online, that's how you do it. So I will say that, um, so what is medicated feed? So medicated feed, it's actually not a medication that's in it. Um, it's got something in it called amprolium. And what amprolium does, um, there's something called coccidiosis that chickens can get. Um, and what amprolium does um, essentially is it starves that, um, it creates a vitamin shortage um, in the chicken that starves that coccidi coccidiosis from, from thriving. So when you give them medicated feed, because they're gonna be exposed to it, it's everywhere. Um, if you give them medicated feed, it helps them build up a tolerance to it because they will be exposed to it. It helps them build up a tolerance to it. So by the time you release them out into the wild, um, outside, uh, it shouldn't be an issue. They should be able to fight it off. 
Um, I have never had an issue with, I've always used medicated feed. I've never, ever had an issue with coccidiosis. If you go online and be, well, I never used it and I never had an issue either. Okay, fine. I'm telling you, just get the medicated feed. It's it's not worth the risk. Um, it's not, it, it just isn't, in my opinion, worth the risk. Um, so get that medicated feed for those baby chicks. Um, if you're going to get meat chickens, um, they do have a grower feed that makes them get really fat really fast. Um, but if you're just having layer hens, um, after they're about four months old, you switch them from that chick feed to layer feed. So you don't want to switch them early. Um, and it is kind of a pain in the butt, like when you have baby chicks that aren't old enough yet, and you've got two kinds of food, that's like a little bit of a pain and you have to do a little bit of juggling um, to figure out how to keep them out of the food. Um, I found I just put it up higher and they couldn't get to it and little chickens could, but uh, the little chickens could only access their feed. So that's something you'll have to figure out. Um, you know, so again, you've got your, your meat feed for meat chickens. You don't wanna give that to your layer chickens. You have options. There's crumbles or there's pellets. Um, I like crumbles. Um, I think it's a little, I mean, I like it, but some people like pellets because they swear that pellets are less messy than crumbles. I've always fed my chickens crumbles, so I just, I'm not really attached to one or the other, but I see no reason to switch their food now. Um, and you don't want to keep switching their food. You don't want to give them Purina today, and then tomorrow you give them something else. Um, just pick one and stick with it. Uh, it's, it's not going to be fatal if you switch it, but if you think about it, if you have a dog or a cat, um, if you if you can avoid switching their food, do. Um, so free feeding. So you can just leave food out for them, unless they're meat chickens. That's a whole different ball game. But if you just have hens, just laying hens that are, you just want for eggs, you can just leave food out. They're not gonna overeat. They're not gonna eat more than they should. They're not gonna eat, they're not gonna get fat on chicken feed. Um, they, will get, they will get fat on scratch and treats. Believe it or not, you can have overweight chickens. Um, so what is scratch? Scratch is just that. Have you ever seen a chicken scratch around in the dirt? Um, that is a natural behavior. They're scratching around looking for bugs, looking for grubs, looking for little treats in the soil. Um, so you do want, to, if you have your chickens penned up and they're not gonna free range, you do wanna have that scratch available to them so they can mimic that natural behavior of scratching. It's pretty adorable because when you have baby chicks and they're like three days old, they start scratching around and it's like super cute. Um, so scratch and treats in moderation, no more than 10% of their diet. Um, so grit, grit or stones, they're just little stones. You can buy a bag of grit. Um, if they free range, they usually will get it out in the wild. Um, but chickens, when they digest, their food gets mashed up in their gizzard um, with stones to make it smaller before it gets into the intestine. So they do need to have that. Um, they also need a calcium supplement. If you have a, a high quality layer feed, it should have enough calcium, but you always want to make sure that they have a calcium supplement. Usually crust oyster shell is what people use. You can buy it at the feed store and just, you know, throw a handful out every couple of days. They'll eat it when they need it. Um, they won't eat it when they don't need it. Uh, when chickens, um, when chickens use up the calcium supply in their, in their body by laying eggs, because an eggshell is calcium, um, it will start to pull calcium out of their bones to make up for that deficit. So you want to make sure that you have that supplement there available just so that doesn't happen because you don't want chickens with brittle bones. Uh, your feeders, rodents, keep them out as much as you can. I get it. You live in the woods. I live in the woods. Um, there's mice in my chicken coop. I know it. Um, they'll either get eaten by the chickens or whatever. I know because one ran across my foot the other day. So I know they're in there. Um, they make little nests in the coop out of bedding and feathers, which again is adorable. I don't care if they're in there, but because I know it's a, a unavoidable. Um, you want to make sure that food is dry and easy to clean. Um, you, you know, wet food is mold, mold is bad. And you want to make sure that you can get into that feeder and clean it, um, sanitize it. Um, and if you look at this feeder, again, I like this one. You kind of have to figure out what works for you. They will dump their food over. Like this bowl gets kicked over all the time. They will dump their food over. This they haven't dumped over because it holds 20 pounds of feed. There's a hole on either side where they stick their head in uh, and eat. Um, and then this top is like this, so they can't get up there and sit on it 
and knock it over. Um, so again, it's you kind of have to find what works for you. Some people hang their feeders um, up. I could hang this one if I wanted to, but it's fine where it is. It's on a cinder block. <laughs> um, so this is how this is. Here's my setup. So right here on my smaller coop, these are feeders right here. They're very sturdy. Here's the inside where they can stick their head in there and eat their food. So it keeps the food dry. It keeps, you know, I've never had anything get in here, try and rip the feeders off the side. We'll talk a little more about setups too, but this is how I have it set up in the smaller coop. This is in the bigger coop. Just check my chat here. Whoops. Let me see here. Okay, so I live in a city with stray cats, mice, and rats. Uh, how do I recommend I protect the birds? I will actually get to that. So hang on one second and we'll, we'll get there. Uh, a little more about treats. Um, anything fresh is good. Lettuce, greens, carrot tops, herbs, uh, tops of radishes. Uh, if you didn't finish that salad, as long as there's not a ton of dressing on it, um, you will find that they're picky. Uh, my Mine don't like peppers. They don't really like strawberries, which is weird, but they love grapes and they love corn. Oh my God, do they love corn. Um, fresh fruits, not dried, because dried's loaded with sugar. Uh, mine love grapes. Oh, they love, oh God, they love watermelon. Oh my God. Uh, and if you look around, like my local farmer's market, they have like a, what I refer to as the past the date shelf, where it's not bad, but it's past the sell by date. Um, I get great deals on food uh, there, like half a watermelon. Oh yeah, they'll love that. Um, fresh veggies. So when you have corn on the cob in the summer, throw the throw whatever you don't eat in the in the pen. They'll love it. Um, they love tomatoes, cucumber, squash. I mean, they love all that. Um, plain unsalted popcorn that's air popped. That's a fun treat for them. Mealworms. You can kind of see in here. Um, there's some mealworms in here. Black oil sunflower is good. This is oyster shell that I threw in there. There's a little bit of corn, some random grains. Um, so black oil sunflower feed grains. Um, if you go to any feed store, you can buy a bag of scratch grains. Like you don't have to, you don't have to buy 14 bags of stuff and mix it up. Bugs and worms from your yard. So if you do let them out, they will take care of some of those bug problems. Um, if you ever see a grub in your yard, just throw it in the chicken pen. They'll make quick work of it. Um, earthworms, they love that. And uh, if you ever have Japanese beetles, uh, Japanese beetles are kind of dumb and kind of slow. So I take a container and I knock them off the plants into the container and I toss them in the chicken coop and they're done. So they will definitely, they love bugs. Um, <laughs> the other, in the summer, there was a spider, in my, a bit, it was a big spider. I was like, whoa, that's a big spider. And this chicken came out of nowhere, and, pff, gone. So spider was gone. Um, so yeah, they will eat it. Um, they, will, they will eat those bugs and those worms. Um, not for treats, anything junk food, salty, sugary, processed, no, 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 no chocolate, no candy. Don't give them fried stuff. Um, if you don't eat it, like if it's moldy and gross, don't give it to them. Um, Cause that can actually cause a problem called sour crop. Um, if you give them moldy food and raw potato peels and I cannot remember the substance that's in them but they are not good for chickens. If you're not sure, don't feed it to them. Um, but you can, like today has been really cold. Normally I try and give my girls lettuce cause they love lettuce but it's so cold the lettuce will freeze. So I actually, the cheapest chicken treats in the world, I buy a bag of frozen corn and a bag of frozen peas, let them thaw it out, and I just throw a handful of that out there, and I love it. So you don't have to, you don't even have to give them treats. Like, you don't have to give them treats at all. But it's fun watching them chase after grapes, and it's a good way to um, get rid of some of the stuff that you might throw out. So instead of tossing it, give it to the chickens. They'll eat it. They'll eat anything. Water. This is a big thing. Um, they do drink a lot of water, so you want to keep your water clean. Um, in the summer, you have to clean it a little more because when it's warm out, there's more algae that gets in there. So I spray a little bleach and wipe it out and refill it uh, probably like twice a week. Um, it's not an overly arduous process. It's easier in the summer when I can just let the hose out there. Um, add vitamins or electrolytes if you need to. So um, I usually add vitamins or something called rooster booster or poultry cell. I add that when I have new chickens that come in um, or when they're younger. Um, that's, uh, that's very specific. I might could talk all day about vitamins and electrolytes. Um, or if it's really hot, you know, you can put some chicken vitamins in their water just to give them a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra oomph. 
Um, a lot of times you can use water to distribute medication. So that coccidiosis I was talking about, the medication you use for that is liquid and you just put it in their water. Um, but like I said, I don't, you shouldn't have to ever deal with that. Um, waters, this is a nipple water. So in this picture, you have to kind of squint and look in. There's a little metal button. When they push on the little metal button, water comes out. Uh, I hang mine because they knock it over in about two seconds. Um, this is heated, so you can see the cord going up here. So in the winter, I plug it in. Um, it does help keep your sanity. Um, I like this because again, it's a closed system. They will poop in it, they'll get dirt in it. If you just have a bowl of water out there, you're gonna be changing that thing four times a day. They'll kick bedding into it. They just, they're just, they're gross. Like I said, they're dirty. Um, they don't know <laughs> and they will drink dirty water. So I, like I said, I hang them up and heat them in the winter just to make my life a lot easier. Um, because I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours every day cleaning out waterers. So these are a little expensive, whoops. These are a little expensive. These are about 50 bucks a piece. You don't have to spend 50 bucks. I should have taken a picture. I actually had to rig one where I have this heated dog bowl in a nesting box. So it, I do have to bring water out once a day, but it's way better than having to bring it out like three times a day. Um, and unfreezing waterers is no good. So do some research and pick. There's all kinds of different heated ones. Um, I'm going to try one next year. I'm going to drill a hole in the top of this where you can just drop a little heater down in there like a fish fish tank heater. And I have a couple questions in my chat. I think if I can pull that up. There we go. Will the chickens try to get your compost heap? Um, yes, they will. Um, and mind you, uh, they do get in the compost heap and it's fine. I mean, the worst case, hey, they'll poop in it and that's good nitrogen for your compost. Um, I have a secondary compost heap that, yeah, they get in there because I just dump stuff on top of it and they'll get in there and they'll scratch around and they'll probably eat a couple things they shouldn't, but it's never been a big problem um, other than the making a mess, but yeah, they will. They'll get in there. They won't. It, it, I mean, unless you're like composting something horrible, but I can't imagine you can put anything in there that would hurt them. Yeah, they, they, they will. <laughs> they definitely will because there's probably bugs in there too. So if there's bugs, they know. And they know too. What's funny is they absolutely know. Like they know where the compost thing is because I put poop and bedding and like kitchen scraps in there and they know, like they'll run right over there. Like they know what's in there. So yeah, they're food. I don't know if that makes them smart or food motivated, but yeah, they'll get in there, but it, it shouldn't hurt them. Whoops. Okay. So how much space do you need? Um, in your coop, you need four to six square feet per chicken, six to eight feet for bigger bird, for bigger breeds. Um, this is really a non-negotiable thing. Now, if you have something like a silky that weighs a pound, that's a little different because they're all going to huddle anyway. But if you get just, you know, regular normal sized chickens, you want to make sure they have enough room because if they don't, they will start pecking at each other. Um, they are territorial. If you've ever heard the phrase pecking order, yeah, that's it. Um, so they do need, they do need room. Um, bedding should be plain pine shavings, no cedar. Um, the oils and cedar is not good for your chickens. Some people use sand um, in their coops. Um, my, my little coop, I just put some bedding underneath the roosts to catch the poop. I don't have the whole thing filled with bedding because they don't sleep down there, they sleep on the roost. Um, in my big coop, which is eight by eight, um, I don't have anything on the floor. Uh, I just put, uh, sticky vinyl tile down so I can just use a big squeegee and scrape the poop up. If I had bedding in there, it would be like a bazillion dollars to put bedding in there. So I only put bedding in the nesting boxes. You'll kind of have to figure out what works best for your coop. Some people use sand. Um, I know sand can get cold in the winter and be hard to clean. Um, and you do need to clean it every day. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to, you don't have to take everything out and you don't have to like scour it clean every day, but you do need to get in there and get the poop and, um, you know, if they knock their food over or whatever, you do need to get in there every day and at least get some of the poop out because those, those um, fumes will build up and it's not good for your chickens. And, you know, do you want to sit in your own poop all day? Uh, especially nesting boxes, like my silkies, they sleep in the nesting boxes. They don't get up on the roost. Like I said, I don't know if they're just dumb or what, but they'll be like four of them crammed into a nesting box and then they crap in there all night. So I have to go in there and um, clean that out so that when they're laying eggs, they don't have to sit there in their own poop. So if you have an attached run, a pen, um, 10 square feet per chicken minimum. 
Uh, again, don't skimp on this. Don't, and chickens are social. So you can't have just one or two, like three is really the recommended minimum number. Um, I put plain wood chips in mine. Um, some people don't put anything, but then it turns into a muddy mess. Uh, so I do recommend something, not mulch, because mulch has dyes in it. Um, just plain old wood chips. You can get that from your local um, nursery. I think I pay like $11 a yard, which is like nothing. Um, you want to have sand for dust bathing. Um, so why do they dust bathe? So chickens, if, if you've ever seen them, they will dig down um, and scratch around in the dirt, and then they'll get down and they wiggle around and they flip all the dust and the dirt all over themselves. So what it does is it gets down next to their skin and it smothers any parasites and it soaks up any excess oil. And then they get up and shake it off and have really nice, pretty clean feathers after that. Um, so you do wanna make sure if they are penned up, they have a dust bathing area. Uh, if they're not penned up, just know that they will dust bathe in your garden or in your flower pots, um, wherever they feel like they want to. Uh, so chicken wire is not to keep predators out, but it is to keep chickens out. <laughs> so if you don't want chickens somewhere and you're gonna let them free range, then make sure make sure you put some fencing up because they will get in there. Um, they're very determined. Um, let's see here, whoops. So uh, a lot of this is so subjective. You have to do what works for you. Um, I've just, I found what works best for me. Um, I like to not, like, I love to spend time with my chickens, but I don't want to spend all of my time, like, scooping poop and doing, um, doing chores. I want to just have fun with them and enjoy them. So you have to figure out what sort of routine works for you and what, um, materials you're going to need to make that happen. Let's see, we have some stuff coming in the chat. Good chunk of my backyard is paved. Is that a problem? Um, it shouldn't be a problem as long as they have, now they're going to poop all over your pavement or your patio. So just know that they are going to poop. Um, you know, as long, it depends. If you're going to let them free range, as long as they have somewhere that they can scratch around and just do chicken behaviors, it's fine. Um, they should be, they should be all right. Um, and how much time a day do you think is required to keep everyone healthy and happy? That is a good question. So I'm going to frame it um, in my in, in my situation, um, if I really, if I needed to hustle, I could take care of all my chicken chores in 10 to 15 minutes every day, um, just the basic stuff. So every day, um, you know, I get their little treats ready, uh, go outside. Um, I, I let them out when I'm in the yard, uh, if they want to go. In the snow, their highnesses don't like to go out. They stand there and squawk at me like it's my fault that it snowed. Um, but I will go out and, um, you know, I make sure the waters aren't frozen. Um, clean them out if needed, uh, check the coops, the one, although right now it's winter, so I have to like use a scraper and like scrape the frozen poop off the bottom of the coop. Um, so I sweep all that stuff up. I just make sure everybody has food. I fill it up if needed, but the way I have my feeders set up, I hardly ever have to fill them up. Um, you know, change the water, clean out the nesting boxes, collect eggs. Um, and that's, that's kind of the basics. If there's no issues, I mean, if a waterer is frozen, then that adds some time. Um, if it's, you know, then I open up the coops in the morning and then in the afternoon, I go out and check on them in the winter. That's five minutes. I go out, I just collect eggs. I always do a head count because I'm anal, but I want to make sure everybody's accounted for and nobody's missing or sick. Uh, close up the coops, give them a couple of handfuls of treats uh, and a little bit of scratch before bed. Um, so that's like five minutes. So anywhere, and if you have a really, if like when I had one coop and I'm gonna have six chickens, like that was even faster. So it's about the same as if you have a dog or well, actually less than a dog, but about the same as a cat, about the same as a cat. So if I hustle, if I really, like, I like to take my time and, you know, like spend time with my chickens and feed the squirrels and be snow white. But if I really had to hustle, I could, I could do basic chores in probably 10 minutes, assuming there's no, uh, assuming there's no major issues. You know, and of course they wait until I have somewhere to be for there to be an issue. Um, then that's, but yeah, it's about the same as taking care of a cat. Let's see, we have another question in our chat. Oh, you guys like read my mind. Um, can I give you a ballpark range? I can, as a matter of fact, I have a whole slide on that. Um, if you let the chickens free range, will they not lay eggs in their nesting boxes? That is a great question. Um, 
you have to do a little bit of training with them. Um, but everybody lays at a different time. Like mine lay anywhere from like first thing in the morning until probably about noon. Um, so you could keep them locked up, but sometimes they won't. Like if they really free range all day, every day, you might go in your garage and find like, <laughs> you might find like a, a stash of eggs somewhere. Um, mine, mine, I don't think would do that even if I let them free range all day because they know where to go to lay their eggs because they've been like, they're good with habit. Um, but yeah, so it's possible. So it's a good idea to make sure they understand where to lay their eggs um, and keep them locked up for long enough um, until they get the hang of it. And then how do you know a chicken, wait, hold on a second. Oh, are they on a schedule? Uh, yes, they are on a schedule as a matter of fact. So chickens are pretty interesting. They can see ultraviolet light. So they are up before the sun comes up. Um, so they, they, know they, get, they know they get treats in the morning. And if I don't get out there by like a certain time, they're making a little bit of a fuss because they know they're like, lady, where's our treats? So yeah, they know. I mean, and then, but so much of their schedule is really um, instinct. Like they get up when the sun comes up and then they go to bed before it gets dark because chickens are like us. They can't see in the dark. So, you know, they need to get to bed before it gets too dark for them to see. But yeah, they know, um, they know. Uh, they kind of set their own schedule, but, and you know what, honestly, I'm anal and I love to spend time with my chickens. I could not do anything for a few days and they'd be fine. They have enough food, they have enough water. It'd be real stinky in there and there'd be a ton of eggs. Um, there'd be a ton of eggs, but I could, uh, I could just leave them for a couple of days and they'd be fine. But I wouldn't do that because I just like to spend time with them. And then how do you know if a chicken is sick? Do they need to be isolated? Another good question that I will come to shortly. You guys are full of good questions. Okay, so um, for your coop, should, coop and run should be sturdy with secure latches to keep those predators out. Um, and by secure latches, I mean either a double latch, like you have to undo two of them, or some sort of a compound latch where you have to do two things to open it up, because raccoons are smart and foxes are smart. Foxes will memorize when you're in and when you're out. I mean, they are smart, they know. Um, you need plenty of ventilation. And it seems counterintuitive, like, oh my God, it's so cold. But I always leave the coop door, the little chicken door open. Um, and my big coop has a ridge vent because you want that ventilation. You don't want it to be totally sealed because it's, it's gross in there. Um, if they're dry and out of the wind, they're fine. Um, you wanna have roosts so they have somewhere to sleep that are raised off the ground. You want it to have it to be easy for you to clean and easy for you to collect eggs. Um, I'll show you an example. There's all these really cute little coops from Tractor Supply, which is all well and good, but you know you can't get in there and clean it out. Um, you want accessible nesting boxes that be secured. And I'll show you pictures of all of this. Um, pine shavings, never cedar. Um, attached run for safe outside time. Um, you want to include enrichment, which I will explain in a moment. Um, automatic doors. Some people do that, that they open at a certain time and they close at a certain time. I don't have those because I worry about like trapping a chicken outside the coop. Um, but that's, you know, some people will do that. Um, like if they're going to go out of town, like they'll open at 9 a.m. and close at 9 p.m. Um, and hardware cloth is your friend. I'll show you what hardware cloth is. Chicken wire does not keep anything out. And I'll explain more of this with some photos. Okay, so as we talked about before, everything eats chickens. And I mean, everything eats chickens. Um, unleashed dogs, I put that on here because honestly your dog or your neighbor's dog is one of the biggest threats to your chickens because they will kill chickens. You might think that Fido is the sweetest dog and that might be true, but they will kill chickens. That's one of the biggest predators um, of at least backyard urban and suburban flocks or dogs. So just keep that in mind. Um, so if you can see here, this is a, a compound latch. So if I want to open this up, I have to lift this thing up and then push the door open. So a raccoon's not going to be able to do that. Like you have to kind of pinch this, pull it up, and then open the door. Whoops. So this is chicken wire. And I know I said it keeps, it doesn't do anything to keep predators out. That's very true. But this um, is welded wire. And the reason I have the, so nothing's going to tear through here unless it's a bear. And I, if I have a bear out here, I've got bigger problems. But uh, the reason I put the chicken wire up, um, I <laughs> because a skunk can squeeze through there. And the reason I know that a skunk can squeeze through there is because I opened the nesting box one day and there was a skunk curled up in there asleep. 
So um, skunks, honestly, they won't hurt your chickens. Um, chickens might go after the skunk. Um, they will eat the eggs, but he just wandered in there. He squeezed right in between this little thing. He squeezed in there. So this is just to keep the skunk out um, because it happened more than once where he was in the pen and I'm like, well, now what do I do? <laughs> like now I have a skunk in my chicken pen. Um, this is cinder block. So I have the whole thing set on cinder block and underneath here, you can't really see it. I have um, hardware cloth and or chicken wire laid flat underneath the ground. So nothing can dig underneath. So here is kind of my basic setup. This is my big pen. It's hard to see, it's 20 by 10. So <laughs> here's my silkies. Here's one of my blue egg layers. You can kind of see how little the silkies are. Um, so here's their dust bath. I just use one of those old, um, those sandboxes. So I have just plain old construction sand and some wood ash and some dirt in there. So that's their dust bath. Um, this is wood chips. Again, I get it from the nursery. Um, here's one of their waterers. Um, I have this set up only in the summer. Um, it's another nipple water setup. They haven't been able to knock this one over yet. Um, and then I have some roosts in here because they do like to get up here and hang out. And then I call this enrichment. So I just take some leaves and or these are uh, wood, but you can take whatever, just something interesting because they get bored. They actually can get bored. So it's just, you know, some logs for them to climb on and sit on and heck at and just be chickens. Um, you can kind of see the cinder block all the way around. And this is all welded wire. So this is this is not to be messed with. Um, it also has a cover on it. Uh, you do want to make sure they have covered area. Now, if you have a setup like this, but you don't have anything on the top, you might as well just invite the predators to come right in. Um, so make sure that it is a closed system. You can't see it in this picture, but over here where it says wood chips, that's, that's kind of the door to get in. Oops. Okay, so this is inside my little coop. So I have two roosting bars, which I don't need that many, but that's how it came. Here's the little chicken door. Um, and I only have the, uh, I only have the shavings right here underneath the roost where they poop. As you can see, they poop everywhere. Um, this is in my big coop, my eight by eight. So here's one set of roosting bars. Um, here's my big poopy squeegee. Oh, there's their food. And here's, um, here's my little pile of poop that I had scooped up. Uh, the way this coop is constructed, I do have my supplies on the other side, but I have a hardware cloth wall up so they can't get over there. And then here's my nesting box. Um, I can get to it from outside the coop, so I don't have to climb. I don't have to get on my hands and knees and climb in there and um, try and find, you know, try and get the eggs out. I can just get them from the outside. Oops, I have that. How, how, and I do have a good, uh, a good question here. How of a fence can they get over? Um, they actually can fly bigger than you, like higher than you think. So if you think a fence is going to keep them in, I would have, I would say keep it eight to 10 feet at the minimum. And that might not even be enough. You'd be surprised how high they can fly. Some can't, like my silkies can't fly, but. And you want to make sure they have covered areas because there are hawks and stuff that will take them. So there's my little nesting box set up. Oh, look, she laid me an egg. I always get excited when I open it up and there's an egg. I have this, I had this made so I can secure it open if I want to. That's just a little, a little extra perk. So here's my little hardware cloth. Um, this is hardware cloth. This is exactly what it looks like. So inside is where the chickens stay. Outside is where I have their supplies. Um, again, just so they can't get to it when I'm not there. Um, this big window on the other side is covered in hardware cloth. So if something does get in the pen, hopefully it can't get in there, although they can get in the chicken door, so. My little poop scooper, feed scooper, my lantern in case I need it. Oops, and there's, um, here's one of my helpers. Uh, so I have a couple steps going. Now I have my coop up on skids because I didn't, so something can't get under there and like dig underneath. Um, it'd be pretty hard for something to dig under this one. Uh, so here's one of my helpers. She's supervising and making sure that I'm doing everything correctly. They're so curious, they will just, they're just like now in the winter because they don't wanna go out when I'm trying to clean, they're just in there and that's what they do. Okay, so I have this as, no, this is the type of coop that you can get a tractor supply or Rural King or Amazon or whatnot. It looks really cute. I totally agree, it looks adorable. There's a few problems with this. First of all, um, how are you gonna get in here and clean it? You might be able to reach it, um, but this is so small. Um, you can maybe fit two chickens in here, like maybe. Uh, and then it has this pen attached to it, which is all well and good, but 
how are they going to get there? Like, there's not even enough room for, like, there, it has a ramp in the picture, but there's not even enough room. So there's not enough room in here for anything. Um, so stay away from these prefab coops. Um, I can recommend, there's one company called Over Easy Chicken Coops. Uh, they make really good quality coops. Um, and I got, I, that's where I got my smaller coop. My bigger coop, I went to Amish country um, and I, they have a ton of them. And I actually, um, I had them do some modifications and it was not cheap. I will admit my big coop cost about $2,000. <laughs> so you don't have to spend that much, don't worry. But that was um, the reason I did such a big coop that was so pricey was because I didn't want to have to buy another one. So I knew how many I could add to my coop. Okay, so here's the health basics. So this is one of my girls. She lays blue eggs. Um, this is an Americana. So if you notice, this is her comb. You can, can't really see it because it's very short. Um, and this is her beard. Not all of them are bearded, um, but she's very fluffy. She was expressing her displeasure um, at the fact that it was cold outside. She couldn't go outside. So here's your health basics. Um, healthy chickens, they have nice, bright, clear eyes. They have a bright, upright comb, if they have that type of comb. She doesn't have one. Um, they easy breathing, meaning you can't hear them breathing. Um, they have nice, clean legs. Um, their crop, that's right about here, is normal. It's not, if you can see it and they haven't eaten, or if it's squishy, um, not, it's going to have stuff in it right after they've eaten. But if they haven't eaten or if it's overly full, that could be a problem. Uh, the vent, remember that's the, the, the rear end. Uh, is it clean? Sometimes they get like poop or, you know, if they have like watermelon, it can give them diarrhea. So sometimes it can be a little gross, but generally it's clean. Um, it's not bloody. It's not red. It's not. And you're going to have to know to like pick up your chicken and lift up its feathers and look at its, its butt. Um, nice shiny feathers. They're active. They're alert. Eating, drinking, laying, pooping. You will know when something is wrong with your birds if they're lethargic, if their eyes are closed, um, if they don't wanna eat, if they're not exhibiting normal behavior. Like if one of my chickens didn't run for corn, I would be like, what's wrong? There's something wrong with you. Um, if they're snotty nose, if their eyes um, are goopy, all of those things are signs of a problem. Um, so regular health maintenance. So do home health checks. That means you gotta get used to handling those birds. So you gotta pick them up look closely at their legs, look closely at their eyes, look at their vents, look under their wings. Um, does everything look normal? They breathe in okay. Uh, and you don't have to, you don't have to attack them every day and, and snuggle them. But you know, once a week, once every other week is generally a good idea to get well acquainted with your birds. Um, so you'll know something's wrong. Get used to handling them because when you pick them up, they're gonna flap around and they're gonna squawk. Um, and that freaks a lot of people out when you, and I don't I mean, I don't particularly like getting smacked in the face with wings, but just get used to handling them. It's the, you know, get them used to it also, because it's better if they're used to it when you are trying to fix something that's wrong. Check their poop often. You have to look at their poop all the time. Um, if their poop is weird, and then they have two different kinds of poop. One is just regular poop. It's like greenish or brownish with white on it. That's their regular poop. There's another one called sequel poop, which looks like pudding and smells like the worst thing you've ever smelled. That's normal. Um, but if there's blood in it, if there's worms, if there's stuff in it, uh, that could be a sign of a problem. So just keep an eye on it. Um, what I did find out one day is if they eat red cabbage, it turns their poop teal. Hmm. Um, yeah, it was like, oh, that's an interesting color. Have a first aid kit and a poultry vet number handy, um, and you have to be prepared for anything. A word about poultry vets, depending on where you live, there's probably not going to be one available or access accessible. Um, so know that ahead of time. Know that if something is wrong, know two things. One, if you can see something is wrong, it's probably too late to fix it for the most part. Um, and two, poultry vets are, vets are expensive and they're not always available. Now this is going to sound rather callous and I don't mean it to be so. However, I am not taking a $3 chicken to a $300 vet visit. So you have to be prepared when something goes wrong. Um, that's, again, that's totally my choice. Uh, I understand that I obviously would, don't want any of my birds to suffer ever, but I also have to uh, be realistic as far as cost goes. So be prepared for anything. Um, this is the basics of what you should have in your first aid kit. Um, you know, disposable gloves are really a must. Um, 
again, you guys will get this. Um, you'll get this PowerPoint, so you can just print this off if you need to. Um, check and replace your items as needed. Just remember that anything that's in the the first aid kit is only for chickens. It's not for people. It's not for the cat. It's not for no. Um, except for vet, when you buy vet wrap, um, keep a couple rolls aside because you'll use it on yourself and on your plants. As least I do. Like I use it all the time. Um, Oops. So this is my first aid kit. So I've got my selenium, my Vetarex, rubbing alcohol, you know, all my good stuff. And it just kind of sits in the cabinet for when I need it. Lubricating jelly, yes, sometimes you have to get in there and check things out. Um, it happens. So what do you do when your chicken gets sick? Run through the healthy chicken checklist. Eyes, comb, breathing, feathers, legs, vent. Um, is it very hot or very cold? They could be reacting to the weather. Did they eat something out of the ordinary? So if you've got a lot of diarrhea, did they eat watermelon? Okay, that's probably the issue. Call your vet if needed. Um, isolate your chicken and keep them calm. So be prepared for that. It's a good idea to have a dog crate handy in case you have to do that. Treat to the best of your ability and you have a plan if the worst happens, but have that plan before it happens. So you need to, under, you know, you need to understand that something's gonna happen and sometimes they just die or you'll do your best and they die. So just be prepared what you're gonna do, first of all, with the body when they do die. And you know, if they're suffering, are you going to learn what you need to do to take care of the problem? Or are you gonna let it ride itself out? You just think about what works for you. In my case, if I see somebody sick, I do what I can and then I let nature take its course. Um, that's, my, that's my plan. Um, that doesn't have to be your plan, so just, just think about it before you even pick up your chickens, what you might do because it happens to everybody. It will happen. Um, and sometimes they just die for no reason. Um, so yeah, just make sure, like I had a chicken, that, I had a big bloody pile of poop one morning that was like, oh my God, like what? So I checked everybody's vent. I knew who it was because she had a little blood around her vent, but I went through the checklist. Everything was fine. Her eyes were like, she wasn't acting weird. She was walking a little funny, but like, well, okay, I'll just monitor her. Well, it turns out she probably bro broke a blood vessel laying a really big egg. So that's what the blood was. So, you know, when chickens are growing up, occasionally they will, um, they will lay, they'll shed parts of their intestine. So if you go on a chicken website, a chicken forum, the second you see blood in their poop, they're going to tell you to treat with Corid. Um, just ignore that because that's, you, normally you don't need to do that. Um, Something you should, again, so, you know, if I had blood in the poop, all the other signs were normal, I just monitored. Like there was nothing to do. I didn't need to do anything. Okay, so here's what you don't do. For God's sakes, don't go on an online forum and conf confirm it without science-based research. Because they will tell you, well, put, put oregano in there. That'll, you know, pumpkin, you know, pumpkins and do what, no. Everybody's going to tell you to get apple cider vinegar, the one with the mother. It doesn't cure anything. It doesn't prevent anything. I don't care what anyone says, it doesn't. Science says no. Um, don't use blue coat, it's bad for chickens. It is not recommended for poultry. Uh, it can burn their skin. It's usually not coccidiosis. Um, so you don't need to treat with Corid every single time. If you do treat with Corid, you should also alternately treat with vitamins, which you can read more about that. Um, but it's, there's a lot of bad information online. Um, you don't need to worm in every watery poop. Pumpkin seeds aren't dewormers. They're not, they don't prevent, they're not dewormers. Um, one thing about dewormers, uh, again, I've never had an issue. If you keep your stuff, if you keep your chickens, uh, they have nice clean bedding, clean water, clean coop, like you shouldn't have an issue. But, you know, if you see worms in their poop, that's an issue. Um, herbs don't prevent or cure anything. Chickens will eat them, but they don't prevent mites. They don't prevent uh, parasites. They, they just don't. Um, and don't ever use diatomaceous earth around your chickens. It's not good because it can be inhaled um, and their lungs are very, very delicate. So please don't go into a chicken forum because you're gonna be confused and they're probably wrong, which what am I? I'm, a, I'm in an online situation and telling you what to do, but just make sure that you do all of your research. Um, and when you do search for stuff, try to find things that end in .edu uh, because if you can find an extension like the Ohio State extension, has a whole section on poultry. So, you know, or call your vet uh, if you wanna go that route. 
but look for that science-based research. That's a good, good practice. Here's two books that I can't recommend highly enough if you're going to have chickens. Even if you're thinking about it and you're not sure, at least get the Stories Guide to Raising Chickens. Um, there's a lot of good info in here. The Chicken Health Handbook is really good. Um, I've used it a few times. Um, so these are two good resources that you should definitely have. Whoops, I'll go back to winter here. So chickens through the seasons. So this is my house in the winter. Um, there are chickens in there, I promise. So here's their nesting boxes. This is their feeders. Look at all that snow that was on there. Um, you don't need to heat or insulate your coop. They will be fine. If they are dry and out of the wind, they'll be fine. They have feathers, they'll sit on their feet, they'll tuck their beaks under their wing, they're fine. Heat lamps can be dangerous and can cause fires. I've personally seen it more than once, fortunately not here, but I know people personally who, where a heat lamp has fallen down and ignited the bedding. Um, so I don't recommend heat lamps. They're fine, they don't need them. Um, heated waters are a must. Extra grains are good, because um, that energy and digestion, um, they're a little harder for them to digest, so that'll help keep them warm. Dry and out of the wind, they are gonna spend more time in the coop when it's cold, it's fine. Um, I put a big tarp around the side of the, the run to break some of the wind and keep the snow out. Um, they will lay less in the winter. So some people will put a light on to make them lay all winter long. I personally don't do that, but you can if you want to. In the spring, baby chicks. I love baby chick season. Unplug those heated waters, clean everything out, remove the tarps, deep clean everything, the coop, the run, wash and sanitize, replace those wood chips because you probably need to. Um, Okay, so raising baby chicks. A quick word on this, because I could do a whole section on baby chickens. So be prepared before you order them. Don't order them or go buy them at Tractor Supply and then say, oh shoot, now what do I do? You need a brooder. What, what is a brooder? It's a container. It's somewhere where they're, you're gonna raise them. There's lots of different ones. I use a stock tank from, from Tractor Supply. You need a heat source. You need bedding, food, water, vitamins, small enough food and water bowls because baby chickens are dumb and they can drown. So have all this stuff before you go get your chickens. And don't, don't buy it the same day. Get everything set up and then get your chickens. Um, order at the right time of year so they go outside as soon as they have feathers, that's eight to 10 weeks. So if you order them in January, um, you're gonna be putting, putting them outside um, March, April. So just keep that in mind that if you're worried about that, maybe order them for like April or May so it's warm when they go outside. Do not skip the Merix vaccination. Again, I don't care what anybody online says, vaccinate your chickens. Merix is everywhere. It's a virus, it will kill your chickens. Uh, and it's in the environment because wild birds get it too. So you can't avoid it. Um, so just get the vaccination. It's like $10 on an order of chickens. I think you can vaccinate up to like 60 of them for 10 bucks, so just get the vaccination. Um, it's not worth it because what happens if they're not vaccinated? If they're vaccinated, they can still get it, but they won't grow the tumors and that's what kills them. So just get the vaccination. Um, medicated feed, get a heat plate, a plate, again, not a heat lamp. Um, I'll show you what a heat plate looks like. Watch for pasty butt and what that is, uh, for whatever reason, baby chicks that are raised by humans, um, their poop sticks to their butt and then it closes their butt so they can't poop. So for about a week, you will be running your chicken's butt, baby chick's butt under warm water and pulling that poop, that dried poop off. Pro tip, if you put a little dot of Vaseline on their, their vent, it'll help prevent that. Pay, pay very close attention for the first 24 to 72 hours. That's a critical time. Um, keep them away from pets always. Um, and don't let, don't let small children handle baby chickens, baby chicks, unless they're really supervised because baby chicks are delicate and you drop one or a kid could get too excited and squeeze too hard, um, it's bad for the chicken. So just be careful. Um, children under the age of five really shouldn't be handling, handling poultry anyway, because um, again, chickens are dirty. Happy and content chicks are quiet. If you can hear them, something is wrong. They're either cold, hungry, or lonely. So they either got separated, they got cold, You know, maybe they didn't get under the heat lamp in time. Um, you can DNA test them for gender, which is kind of cool. Like you can buy them from the hatchery, male or female, but some they don't, like silkies, they don't tell you. So I get them DNA tested where you yank out a couple feathers and mail them in to get tested. It's kind of cool. Um, baby chicks are also dirty. So wherever you have them, if you have them in like a spare bedroom, 
they're going to get dust everywhere. So like take out everything in there that you don't want dust on um, and just deep clean it when you're done. Careful integration into your existing flock because your big chickens will try to kill your little chickens. So for us, see this, this is called a chicken tractor. I put the baby chicks in the chicken tractor in the big pen so they could get used to each other, but the baby chickens weren't going to get murdered. Um, so you just have to monitor. Um, sometimes you can put them in there at night and that will make it, um, that'll make it easier to integrate them. So when I brought mine home, they mailed them into the post office. So I, safety first, I buckled them in. And here they are. So this was about 10 minutes after. So you got their boiled egg yolk and their little water and their little feeder. Aren't they cute? So this is a heat plate. It stands on four legs um, and it sort of mimics how a mother would sit on them. And under this heat plate, there's 24 baby chickens. That's how little they are. This is 12 by 12. You can see his little butt hanging out. So if you know if you're not an experienced chicken keeper, I don't recommend baby chicks for your first go around. You can buy older birds, started pullets. I recommend that. Um, so in the summer, clean the coop frequently to keep those bugs and flies at bay. They might lay fewer eggs when it's super hot. Don't overexert them. So like if you have kids, don't let the kids chase the chickens around in the extreme heat. It's not good for them. Make sure they have shade and fresh, clean water. Um, frozen, frozen stuff is good treats. They like that. Um, they do like to sunbathe, which is weird because it looks like they're dead. Like they'll be running and then they'll seriously just, they'll just fall over. I'm like, oh my God. Oh no, it's because they're sunbathing. Um, they hold their wings away from their body and pant when they're too hot and you want to give them less grains in the summer. Fall, deep clean that coop one more time. Get the run tarp, test those heated waterers. Piles of leaves in the run. Bugs and chickens, they like that. So you can uh, take some of your leaves and dump them in there and let them scratch around. And the good news is poop and bedding makes good compost. So here's your approximate upfront costs. Your coop and your run anywhere from 500 to 1500 bucks. If you're handy, you can, I'm not. So I just had a coop built and delivered. So <laughs> this is, you know, do some research, spend some money though on a coop. Don't, don't cheap out on your coop. Feeders and waters, depending on how, obviously if you have like a gazillion chickens, it gets more expensive. Um, your monthly cost could be in 25, 50 bucks, could be a little bit less. Um, first aid kit, your one-time cost, bedding, $5 for a giant bag of tractor supply. Your winter supplies, again, a lot of this is very dependent. Um, egg cartons, those are free. <laughs> have, your have your neighbors save them for you. Um, vet bills, 100 bucks plus per visit. Rooting babies, um, again, not in counting the Cost of the birds, by the time you buy the heater, the water, the feed, the brooder, blah, 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 blah it's about 250 bucks. Chickens are cheap. The chickens themselves are actually cheap. Like you can get chickens for a dollar, really 50 cents a tractor supply. But you know, if you want specialty breeds and stuff like that, um, sexed, it gets more expensive. So it looks, so we call this the thousand dollar egg. It looks prohibitive, but like I said, you can save significantly, especially on this. Um, if you're even slightly handy. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Um, let's see here. So that's a, this is your approximate upfront costs. Um, so before you even start, check your local zoning laws because a lot of people, again, on chicken forums, well, it's not fair. My HOA is making me get rid of them. Well, you shouldn't have had them in the first place. So make sure you're familiar with your local zoning laws setbacks. Um, sometimes you can or can't have roosters, number of birds. Just do your research. Um, research your breeds, your coop size. Um, again, that timeline. Um, if, you get, if you get baby chicks in December, um, you're going to have them inside for a lot longer than maybe you want. Um, bring them home, get them acclimated. Um, they're not going to love you off the bat, but I promise you, they will love you eventually. Um, even my totally spastic like ones that were crazy, like they love me now. Um, enjoy it. You'll be the most popular person in your neighborhood because give your neighbors eggs as I do, and they will love you. Um, you know, be a good, be a good uh, mouthpiece for raising chickens and beware of chicken math. Um, this is a thing. So this is 100% true. Like I started out originally, I was going to get three chickens and now I'm going to be up to 26. And I would have like 126 if I had enough room. But this is, no, nothing is more true. They are addictive. You're like, well, I'll just get one more. Oops. So here's me. Um, this is, so here's my, my yucky boots. I've got water in my hand. My, I look homeless. And 
I'm just sitting here with a chicken in my hand, gazingly, gazing adoringly at my chicken. Uh, but this is kind of chicken keeping. And there's one of my little silkies in the background just doing God knows what. Um, and these are very short. I have two really quick videos to share with you, but they're super short. Um, wait, or not, wait a minute. Can you hear that? No. All right, I just wanna make sure I can't hear it. What did I do here? There we go. Sharing is coming right back at you. Okay, here we go. So this is um, when I brought my little baby chickens home. There we go. Can you guys see that? Hopefully. We can't, no. No. How about now? Yep, now we can. So here's when I first brought them home, like right from the post office. And then the last one um, I have is, this is one of my chickens and she's broody. <laughs> so when, you know, when I said that they go broody, Hopefully you can see this. Hi. <laughs> so she was mad. She was mad, mad that I was, um, yeah, she was pretty mad. So that, um, that really concludes the uh, chicken keeping presentation. Um, do you guys have other questions? I know I dumped a ton of material on you. I will make sure this PowerPoint's available for you. Um, I'm gonna stop my sharing so we can all just chat here. Um, but I just, uh, oh, <laughs> I have a couple of good questions in here. So can you buy a young adult chicken? Yes, but it depends on the hatchery. Um, so check with, check with different hatcheries and also find out if they will or will not ship. Um, it's called a pullet. So usually you can buy one that's like four to five months old. Um, like I bought started pullets, my first birds from Meyer Hatchery and I drove down and pick them up. So check with your local hatcheries. There's probably more around than you think there are. Um, so check with them. I do, again, this is, this is really my opinion, but I do recommend against looking at backyard breeders um, because you just don't know how they raise their birds. They don't vaccinate and you don't know what their biosecurity practices are. Um, so I would highly recommend going with a hatchery. I think, um, I think it's, my, and that's why I, you know, integrate birds from my flock because I know they're vaccinated. I know where they came from. That's, it's, you know, you can do what you like, but I don't recommend it. I would never buy a bird from a backyard breeder ever. Um, not ever, because I, it's too dangerous to me. Um, oh, and so how's the cat with the chickens? So my kitties are only inside, um, but cats will go after baby chicks. Cats generally will not go after a full grown chicken. Um, because the chicken will, they'll, it'll, it can mess that cat up. So just a lot of people have barn cats and, and chicks and chickens that get along just fine. Um, let's see. Will free range chickens eat my herb garden? Yes. They will eat your herb garden, your vegetable garden, your flower garden, your peppers, your tomatoes, your magnolia, your, your, uh, marigolds, your tulips. Yes. They will eat all of it. So if you don't want them in that stuff, just put up some bird netting or some, um, some chicken wire to keep them out. I let mine loose in the garden. Um, well, not in the garden, but I let them loose in the yard and, you know, they will, they'll scratch up your mulch, your flower beds, um, cause that's just what they do. They know that there's bugs in the mulch and they're, and you know what, and just know if you let them free range in your yard, they will crap everywhere. So if you have people come over like, and you're like, oh, let's go sit on the patio. You very well could have poop out there. So just keep that in mind. I mean, I love to let my birds out and just let them roam the yard when I'm out there, but I don't let them out there by themselves because there's too many. I've got hawks and foxes and owls and coyotes. I mean, I got all of it, so. Other questions? Um, and uh, I'm not sure, is my contact avail information available? I don't know if it is or not, or if that's allowed. Um, I don't think we have it set up in the email, but if you would like it to be available, I can talk to Stephanie and have her add some extra information. 
Okay, I can put it at the end of this PowerPoint. Okay. Um, I'm more than happy to answer questions um, as I've, I'm the crazy chicken lady, I'm okay with that. So I'm more than happy to answer questions and um, help help you in any way. Cause I've, I've, this is really one of my greatest joys. I, there's so much, they just bring so much joy. They're so silly and dumb and fun and sweet and wonderful. And I wouldn't trade my chickens for anything. Right peeps? and their beautiful blue eggs. <laughs> so I got nothing else. Like you guys are welcome to hang out, but I got nothing else. Like I'm, I'm I got lots of chicken pictures and memes, but you know. <laughs> all right. Well, thank, thank you, you all everybody. for joining us tonight. And thank you, Shana, so much for sharing your expertise with us. Um, everyone, just please keep an eye out on your email. We're going to have uh, something out to you, I think, tomorrow for further ways to stay connected with Worcester and involved in volunteering and, and things like that. And yeah, that's it. So everyone just have a wonderful evening. And I hope we see you again at another future event. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks everybody.